Welcome back to the Knit Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on this pillow and this is called the Mossy Dots Pillow and you can use this particular pattern for anything really but we are going to do some pillow faces today and this uh, just works out that you're going to make two pieces uh, alike and then you'll sew them together around when you're done. So make sure that you put your pillow frame in there first. So what we have today is that we have a sample of this. I've done a mini sample plus I've done a diagram that I'm going to leave uh, on the knitcrowd.com. Just go to the more information of this video and you can get what I'm about to show you here so that it might be easier for you to work on. I know it was for me. So you're going to notice that there looks like there's some texture work and it looks almost like they're dots just like so. So I did a sample of it just to make sure I understood the pattern and for sure there are dots. And so then they pop out of the work as you can see here very nice almost faint in some way but really quite fabulous in another way as well. So I did this particular pattern and I really struggle with the written instructions. Not that it's hard it's just sometimes you just can get lost in a pattern. So what I decided to do is make a graph for myself a knitting graph. So I'm learning how to do those as well right now in my journey to learn how to knit. And what I've done is that I figured it out of that how it was working together. So in actual fact this is kind of upside down. So when we go to start it what's going to happen is that the dots are going to be in the right here and then the next time you do the dots there will be a half a dot on both sides and then the dots in the middle. So it's kind of like they're forming in between each other. So let me show you the diagram that I'll have available for you on the knitcrowd.com. So here's my diagram right as we have it here and I'll have a scan copy and available. You can uh, download a PDF and uh, print it if you need to. And what we're going to do is that I have just showed you how we're going to be able to do these particular ideas. So what I did is that this is um, an example of how things are going to work up. So um, we have rows all the way from 1 to 20 which ends up repeating itself every time you get to 20. You go back to 1 again which is down here and then you start again. And the reason why there's so many repeating rows is that the one dots here appear in the middle here. So it's not like their dots are sitting right on top of each other. So you have a lot of repeating rows in order, you have a lot of rows in order to get that repeat pattern. So what we have here is that it, it is a one sided pattern. So when you go to look at the example you'll see that this here is the, the knit stitch here in the front but on the back it looks completely different like so. So what's going to happen is that every time that you are working on the front side of this you are going to be knitting across just like so and then when you're working on, on going in back in the other direction you are purling and etc. But let me show you what that looks like on the diagram. So when we go to go across we're going to be knitting our way across this diagram here but when we go back we're going to be purling in order to keep that one sided project going. And then when we come back so what I did on the, this is that I put knit is going in this direction and purl is going in the other direction so that you always remember. So when you have to uh, look at these two particular dots for example. So number three is knitting across. Okay so when you hit these dots it's going to be a purl, knit, purl and then knit, 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 knit and then purl, knit and purl and etc. But when you go in the opposite direction number four coming back you're going to be purling and every time you hit these you're going to be knitting. So you'll uh, purl and knit, purl, knit, purl, knit and then purl, 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 purl and then etc. So you just have to look at it when you're working on these diagrams is that you're looking at it from a perspective of doing opposite because of the way that the work is turned. So you're still going to follow it up like a snaking formation on this diagram but you'll be able to work it out. So today's uh, tutorial may be a little bit long one because I'm going to try to take you through these but I really recommend that you come and get this uh, diagram. You can follow this in the written instructions as well but the diagram I think would be quite, quite helpful for you. Also what you can do and I would do for myself because that's the kind of guy I am is that I would take another piece of paper and line it up. So when you do a row just move it up and move it up so that you can see it and etc. So that you never get lost in this pattern and you know which way you're going to go. So it's just something that you can uh, consider for yourself. So you need an 8 millimeter size US 11 uh, knitting needle today and uh, we don't have too many stitches. If you want the repeat pattern so say you want to do this for something else the multiples are 10 plus 3. So you go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 stop whenever you want but make sure you add 3 and you need that 3 because these dots are split in half just like you see here and that's the only way to get that. So it's multiples of 10 plus 3. So if you're new to knitting this is the Knit Crowd and we have slower tutorials available on doing certain things like the knit stitch and the purl and casting on, casting off and etc. So this is going to cast on and I'm just going to uh, just quickly kind of go through this real quick because we have other tutorials that are slower. So in order to cast on in this you're just going to insert this 
needle into the loop of the slip stitch or slip knot and you are going to do like a twist cast on. So just going over top like you're about to knit, pull through and then before you put this one here back onto this one back here, you're just going to twist and ins and put it on just like that. So you, you're gonna do that. So you can either do it to what it says, so 63 stitches if you wanna do the pillow, but if you wanna do any size that you want, maybe even an afghan, just keep it a multiples of 10 and then add three at the end. So just continuing to go, I'm just gonna do a smaller example than the one I showed you because the repeat pattern going across is the same thing as you go across. It's just a matter of that you'll have more polka dots to work with, right? Or more dots. So I'm going to do a multiples of 10 plus uh, three at the end. So I'm gonna do 23 for myself in order to show you how to work this pattern. So I'll see you at the end of that and you can make it as long as you need to. So I now have 23 on here but you can do any sizes that you wish. So let's take a quick look at this diagram. So what we have here is that rows one and two are just very very simple. So row number one, we're gonna go in this direction, okay? Row number one, see how I put the numbers on the sides? So when it's on this side, it means you go in this direction. When it's on this side, it means you go in this. So it means that we're gonna knit our way all the way across then for row number one. And row number two, what we're going to do is knit the first one and the last one but purl everything in between so that we're creating that right side project. So let's begin row number one together. So let's just uh, insert your, uh, get, <laughs> let's get your hands all ready up here. And let's uh, just insert into and do a knit stitch and you're just gonna do a knit stitch all the way across for row number one. So row number one, please knit stitch all the way across right to the end, I'll see you at the end. So let's start row number two. Here's a clue, whenever it's an even number, two, four, six, eight, who do you appreciate? The knitting of course. But every time it's an, uh, uh, an even number, you're going to be purling across. But the first stitch and the last stitch will always be a knit, okay? That allows it to have a nice uh, edge. So the first one will always be a knit regardless of what you're doing on this project. It'll always be there and then the rest of it will be knit or sorry, rest of it will be purl. So this row number two is just strictly just a purl all the way across and you're going to revisit our rows number one and two later on in the future as you get in between the dot shapes that you see within the pillow face, okay? So you're just gonna purl all the way across for row number two. I'll see you at the end. Make sure that very last stitch you actually do a knit stitch, okay? So change that for the very last stitch and I'll see you there in just a moment. So row number three, we're now going to start and create these dots. Now here's the fabulous thing about it. It goes in sequence so you can have as many dots as you want across your project. They're always the same spaces between each other. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you can write on your items on how many you need to do. So it's always gonna be the same. So when you go to hit one, you're going to do uh, this particular pattern so it always stays in balance. So the next time you hit it, it'll be one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, as, it gets, as the dots get bigger and then it will get even bigger to three. So look at that, it's an odd number. So then it will get to five again, three, and then five, and then seven. And you can just see that here in the diagram as well. So if you can remember that, it just is a lot easier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head out from the gate and we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and five. So you do five in a row and then you're gonna do a purl, knit, and purl. And then once you get that last purl done, you go seven knit and etc. So let's head across and so let's do row number three together. Now as I said up here, just remember these instructions are written. If you prefer written words versus my diagram, by all means uh, you're available to use it. It's a free pattern. So the first five stitches uh, for you here are going to be a knit stitch. So just going right in and you're going to do a knit. So one and you gotta count and two and three, four, and five. So if you look at the diagram, there's two purl stitches that are making up the bottom part of the dot. So the next one is a purl. So let's purl that one, okay? Just purl that one and then the next one is knit. And then purl one more time. So that's the second dot that appears at the bottom or the second stitch of the dot, I guess. Okay, so it was purl, knit, and purl. Once you get that satisfied, I wrote the number seven, so let's move this uh, work backward, like the strand backward, and the next five in a row 
will be all, sorry, the next seven in a row will be all knit. Sorry about that, so it's seven. So one and two, three, four, and five, six, and seven. So now that you got that done, we're gonna do another bottom of a dot. Okay, so the first one then is a purl followed by a knit stitch followed by a purl. Now if you're gonna, if your work's a lot longer, you're just gonna do seven knit stitches in a row again and then you're going to then do the same configuration and then continue to do that. Now I'm running to the end of this so the very final five stitches for me would just be a knit stitch. So even when you get to the end of your particular project or your um, row, you'll have five left over at the end. So just have to knit the five that are left over on your knitting needles and that will conclude the first uh, really row of doing these dots on row number three. So let's uh, just carry on to row number four. So starting with number four, see the dots get more, okay, and then uh, this row it gets even wider. So that therefore there's less space before you hit the dot if you can see here. So remember what I said, two, four, six, eight, anything even is going to have a knit right at the end because every time we go back this way we're gonna be doing purling and then these represent the knit stitches when you're going back in the other direction. So you're gonna continue to do that and so let's begin row number four together. So let's start row number four. So the very first stitch is going to be a knit stitch. Okay, so we're gonna be purling all the way across on this one except for when we hit those dots. So the next three are just strictly purl. Okay, this is keeping the other side of the work to be the right side. So three in a row are just going to be purls. And then we're gonna start working on the dots. So the first one of the dots is gonna be a knit stitch this time. So it's a knit and then purl Okay, and then a knit again and then purl and then knit. Okay, that's one, that's one dot there. So this time the next five stitches are going to be just, uh, just regular purl. So move that stitch, uh, the yarn forward, sorry, and you got five in a row. So one, two, and three, four, and five. And now we're gonna start another dot. So you keep doing that, that, that five in between all the dot formations. So the first one for the dot is gonna be a knit. Okay, so it'll be a knit and then a purl. Just making sure I got, keep my yarn organized. So purl, that was number two. And then a knit. Okay, and then a purl. And then finally a knit. So if my math is right, I should have only four stitches left and I do. So you'll continue that same thing going all the way across and you'll be left with four on the end by the time you get all the way across. So the final three are only gonna be a purl and what's gonna happen in that last one? Well because you're purling yourself across, the last stitch and the first stitch of these ones that you do that on will always be a knit. So to move it to a knit stitch. And that concludes off row number four. Let's turn and work and see if we can start seeing what's going on. No, not really. So let's move along to row number five. So let's begin row number five. So the dots are even gonna get wider here in row number five. So the first three are only a knit stitch. So let's get those off the way. So one and two and three and now we got some dots to play with. So now t there's gonna be four of those formations inside the dot this time. So we're going to purl the first one. So I'm gonna count those. So there's a purl the first one and then you're gonna knit. So one of the purls is done. You're gonna purl the next one. So this is the second one. And then you're gonna knit and then you're gonna purl again. This is the third one 
and then knit and then you're gonna purl. That's it. And the purl is the last one here. Okay, so there, there's the dot getting even bigger. You might be able to see it coming out in a little bit of the bottom here. So what we have here is that there's only three knit stitches that separate the dots this time. So we're gonna move that yarn back and the next three are just regular knit stitches. So one, two, and three. And now we're going to do another dot formation. So we're just gonna move forward first and you're gonna do a purl. This is your first one and then knit. Okay, you're gonna move forward again and purl. This is number two and then knit. And then you're gonna purl. That's number three and then knit and then purl for number four. And if you're right and you go all the way in the same formation, the final three will only be three there and you are going to uh, do a total there of three knit stitches. So move that yarn back and it'll be three knit stitches at the end of this, this row, uh, row. So this is row number five. I'm gonna take you back to the graph in just a second. So that's what it looks like at this moment. So we just finished off row number five. So you're gonna notice row number six comes in a little bit earlier. So okay, so it's like number four. It's the same thing and it's like number eight. Do you see the similarities there? So it's gonna uh, be just in between in the middle and then number seven is gonna be like number five. If you can see the similarities on how they're working together, it'll really work out and see you see number nine is the very same as number three. Do you see that? So it's a, a kind of a really easy way to handle this. So what I'm gonna do is that I'll show you number six and then you can refer back on how to do the rest and then I'm gonna just come up and then I'll show you how to do this section here. And then once you get all the way to the top here, you have to go back all the way back down to number one and continue to go back up again. So let me show you how to do round number, or row number six. So row number six, remember it's the purling row. So the first one has to be a knit and the sewed is the last one. So now what we're going to do is that the dots that we're going to make are gonna appear uh, further in. So the next three are going to be just strictly purl. So you have one and you can see that on the diagram but you can also read it in the instructions as well. Whatever you prefer. Okay, so those three now are the beginning. So now we're going to start the formation. So the first one is gonna be knit Okay, and then purl and then we're going to knit again. That's the second one of three and then purl and then knit one last time. Okay, so that's the total dot completed and so we're just going to just wrap it and get it ready for purling again. So now this time there's going to be five stitches in a row that are just strictly purl, okay? So we'll just do the next five. So one, two, three, and four, and five. And now we're gonna start another dot again. So this one here, the next one will be a knit. So move that yarn backward. So knit, that's for one, and purl. And then knit. This is the second one. And then purl. And then finally knit. That's the last one of the, the group of three that you need. Okay, so if you've got it right and you're just gonna do that all the way across but when you get to the end there should only be four stitches left. So the final th three of those will all just be a purl. Whoops. And then what's the last stitch? Do you remember? It's the knit stitch. So just move this yarn back and knit the final. So what I'm gonna have you do is that I'm gonna have you continue to go. This was row number six. You're gonna see the dots actually coming out now in the front of the work. Uh, when you go to look at it really carefully just like so you can see it in the screen. So I need you to do now rows number seven, eight, 
and 9. You already know how to do it. I've already done it. Just reverse the video if you need to review and how to get there. And I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'm gonna meet you at the, uh, at the end of row number 9 and start you on row number 10, 11 and 12. So I've now just finished up to row number 9. So the dot is actually completely done. So rows number 10, 11 and 12 are just simply just going back and forth just not doing anything so it separates the dots from each other as it goes up in the project. So when we go to do the next one then uh, number uh, 10 it's an, uh, it's an even number right. So that means it has to be purling across. So let's just get this ready into my hands here. And so remember with the purling across the first one is always gonna be a knit stitch and then we just strictly just purl across. So row number 11 will just strictly uh, be knit again and then um, row number 12 will be exactly what I'm doing here. So what I want you to do is I want you to do those three rows. So rows number 10, 11 and 12 and then I'll just get you started on the dots because you pretty much know the concept. It's just a matter of doing it at this point. So I'll see you at the end of these three rows and we'll get you started on the next set of dots. So I've now finished up to row number 12. You can see the dot formation is right here. This is the flat area and so I have three rows that really separate the dots from sitting on top of each other. So let's go back to our diagram. So the only difference between these dots and these dots is the location. So you're gonna follow it along here and we're gonna go for row number uh, 13 and you can see you can follow the dots just like it had been before. The fabulous thing is about is that they're still seven apart from each other just like they were down here when you start it off like this. Okay. So it actually makes a, a lot a lot of sense. So you got two right here then a purl and then you got two in the end and etc. So you're just gonna follow this up and then be able to do it just like you did before and then once you get to row number 20 you're gonna go back to row number one. Now one also has nothing in it just like row number 20 doesn't. Okay so it's a blank. Do you see that? So then that gives you the distance. It's like giving the three distance right here. The three rows that you need in order to create that distance. So what I want you to do is that just follow the diagram. Okay. So just two, purl, seven, and then purl two. So let me just get you started because I really think this is a pattern that you just really can manage on your own. It just doesn't matter how to do the stitch work in order to do it. So let's just begin and get you started. So that we're going to knit the first two as per the diagram and the written words also say that as well. So you're going to knit the first two. So one and two and then you're going to purl the next one. Okay. So that one's just gonna sit by itself. This is creating like a half dot on the on the edge of your work. So the next seven are going to be knit. Okay. So one. So this is separating the dots and this is two and three this is four, it's five, six and seven. So there's your seven. So then a dot is gonna exist here. So this is gonna be a full dot. So then there's only gonna be two that represent the dot this time. So it'll be purl and you can see that on the diagram too. So it'll be a purl and then knit and then purl. So you'll continue the same formation going all the way across your work. So how many was it that's gonna separate the dots? It's seven. So there will be seven knit in a row. So if your project's longer than mine is then you just keep going your seven and then you do exactly what I just showed you there with the, the purl knit the purl. So I, I'm gonna do seven. So this is number two so far and it's three, four, it's five. This is six and seven just like you see there. So then the next two are going to be then the final. Oh sorry the next one is gonna be a purl. So this represents the half dot that's on the edge. That makes sense. And then the final two is just gonna be a knit. So hopefully you can understand that um, I'm gonna provide that diagram on the knitcrowd.com. Just look at the more information of this video and you can see that it's really quite easy to follow as, as long as you have the diagram uh, to make it easier. But if you're good with the written words as well you'll see that it completely works out as well. So let me pull up my other example. So you see 
it will work out and these dots will fall in between just like you see here and this really is a fabulous look. I'm actually really quite proud of myself uh, considering that I'm a beginner knitter and I was able to get that done so easily. Again it is a, a one sided pattern so the other side doesn't look the same but it's a really quite a neat idea. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Knit Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com this is the Mossy Dots Pillow and hopefully that you enjoyed the stitch and maybe you use it for something else as well. Until later have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.